Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon text for today is our gospel lesson from Mark chapter 8, verses 1 through 9. And please rise as we hear these words again in Jesus' name. In those days, when again a great crowd had gathered and they had nothing to eat, he called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd, because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way. And some of them have come from far away. And his disciples answered him, How can one feed these people with bread here in this desolate place? And he asked them, How many loaves do you have? They said, Seven. And he directed the crowd to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves, and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And they set them before the crowd. And they had a few small fish. And having blessed them, he said that these also should be set before them. And they ate and were satisfied. And they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. And there were about four thousand people. And he sent them away. These are your words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us by the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. You may be seated. The people who had followed Jesus out into the wilderness were in a pretty tight spot, weren't they? These thousands had followed Jesus for three days, each day further and further away from civilization, until this point where it seems they had run out of food. I mean, we can understand why they had followed Jesus. Hopefully, if we had been alive there and then, we would have followed Jesus too. After all, Jesus was the newest and greatest prophet. Even those who did not like Jesus, like his enemies the Pharisees, had to admit that Jesus was no ordinary man. He spoke and even acted with the very authority of God. But that being said, these people were still in a pretty tight spot. Without Jesus' help, they were all in serious danger of never getting back safely to their homes. We, on the other hand, do not live our lives out in the wilderness. And even if some of us enjoy camping and just getting away from civilization, we still have things like cell phones and GPS and, if it comes to it, search and rescue helicopters, all of which serve to keep us safe even if we find ourselves out in the wilderness without any food. But even though many of the circumstances of our lives are very different from those who lived in millennia and centuries past, we should not think that we are in any less of a desperate situation than they were. The fact that we need what Jesus offers us is not dependent on how hungry or full we are feeling. We would still need Jesus, even if he had promised to never help us in our bodies and lives. But of course, Jesus has not made such a horrible promise as this. The fact that we need Jesus more than anything in heaven or on earth has to do with the fact that we all have the humanly incurable sickness of sin. And this is something which has the capability of killing every single person on earth. This is something from which all of us, young and old, are actually dying from. This is literally what is wrong with the world. But the thing is, unlike is the case with our stomachs telling us whenever it's time to eat because we're hungry, sin and all of its effects is not something about which we are naturally aware. Instead, sin is something about which we need to be told by God through his word. This is why, though, we are not inclined to think of Jesus and of his blessings as something which we desperately need all the time. We don't always feel like we really need Jesus. There are some times, to be sure, when we do feel this way, like we really do need him, like whenever we are shown the fleeting nature of life or if we have the guilt of a particular sin bearing down on our shoulders. But there are other times in life when we do not feel so hungry for Jesus and we can convince ourselves that we can get by just fine without him, at least for a while. 
but realize. Jesus is not an emergency room doctor. And the forgiveness of sins, which he gives us in the means of grace, is not the kind of spiritual healing that we only need when we have ingested something especially poisonous. We need Jesus and all of his blessings all the time. Because, like it or not, whether we feel like it or not, we are all constantly in need of God's grace. But why do we need this? If we are not feeling hungry for something, why should we make a point of receiving it? Well, you've probably heard the phrase, ignorance is bliss. What this saying means is that if you don't know about something that can make you sad, then to not know about it is bliss. This may be true regarding some things, but this saying does not apply if you have a problem that is actually a serious problem for you. When it comes to God's word and what God tells you in his word, ignorance is never bliss. God's truths apply to you just as much if you have never heard them than if you have heard and believed them every day of your life. Even though we do not want to hear about our sins and all of our other problems, it is not bliss to be ignorant of this serious condition because the reality of sin is something about which we need to know. Sin is something in which we are all conceived and born. This is true for you if you know about it or if you don't. Because of our sins, we are all doomed to die and then suffer the hellish agony of separation from God forever. This is true for you if you know about it or if you don't. Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, suffered and died on the cross in payment for your sins. This is true if you know about it or if you don't. But what about this forgiveness that Jesus has earned? Is it applied to you and made yours, regardless of whether or not you believe that it is so? The answer to that last question is no. God does not force those who refuse to believe in Jesus to benefit from what Jesus has done for them. For example, the people whom Jesus fed in our lesson were not forced to eat what Jesus set before them. They needed it, and Jesus gave it to them, but they were not forced. In the same way, God does not irresistibly force anyone to believe and be forgiven and saved. Both sin and God's grace are realities. Whether or not we are looking outside, the sun still rises and sets, right? So also we who have been born and then lived in a state of sin have been offered relief from this by God through Christ. The sickness is real, and so is the cure, no matter how we may be feeling at any given moment. But feelings are usually how we operate. We are all much, much more inclined to see to one of our felt needs than to something that doesn't seem to matter all that much. And this is exactly how the devil tries to get at us by keeping us away from God's loving forgiveness in Christ. The devil actually knows the Bible very well. It is safe to say that he even knows it better than any of us know it, at least according to its bare content. The devil is well aware of the fact that Jesus has paid for our sins by his life, death, and resurrection. It's not as if the devil is happy about this. He tried to stop Jesus from doing this. He tempted Jesus in the wilderness to see to his felt needs of hunger and fear and the need for power. But Jesus did not give in to the devil's temptations. He remained faithful to God and what he had promised. And so Jesus won. He did die on the cross for your trespasses, and he rose again for your justification. But this great truth doesn't help you if you don't know about it, which is why the devil is constantly at work in us, trying to guide us away from God's truth towards, well, anything else. He is the one who encourages us to not get up to drive to church on a Sunday morning. 
He is the one who encourages us to just dive into our food when we're hungry instead of taking a few moments to thank God, as Jesus did in our text. He is the one who encourages us to keep that Bible closed on the table instead of opening it and listening to God and what he says to us in his word. He is the one who is, the, who is encouraging us to go away from God whenever we are feeling like doing that in our lives. The devil can encourage us in these ways to neglect all of our spiritual needs by affecting how we feel. But the devil cannot force us to act on these feelings. He helps us, but none of us can give as the excuse for our sins that the devil made us do them. We are the ones who have so often ignored what God gives to us to satisfy our needs in the gospel because we didn't really feel like we needed it. You'll notice in our text that Jesus never entertained the possibility of sending the people away without first giving them what they needed. Not feeling like it was never part of the equation for Jesus. Jesus knew that he was going to help those people that day in a way that only he could, just as he helps us today and every day in a way that only he can. Jesus does not help us only by telling us things that we would consider good. He does not limit himself and his word to inspiration and feel-good stories about miracles and healing and whatnot. One of the ways in which Jesus does bless us is by reminding us that righteousness in God's sight is something that is foreign to us. In this way, we are actually blessed by the bad news that God gives us in the law. It's as Jesus tells us in the Beatitudes. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. So that we can receive and benefit from the forgiveness which Jesus has won for us, Jesus keeps on reminding us that forgiveness is something we need. But when he reminds us of this, Jesus never leaves us hanging. Instead, through the gospel, Jesus fills up the hole that he has dug in our hearts with his own righteousness, satisfying our needs, freeing us from all fear and uncertainty, and most importantly, making things right between us and God. There are still going to be many times in our lives, though, when we do not feel like we are at peace at all. So often, we and those whom we love still have to face the harsh realities of life in this evil world. But when you face this uneasiness, when you find yourself deprived of the love and care of others, do not leave yourself to wallow in this on your own. Come to God to get what you need. When people speak harshly to you, hurting you with their words, come receive the healing of God's word in the gospel. When people act harshly, harming you and your body and life, will come receive Jesus' own body, which he gives to you with his blood, for the continued assurance of God's love and forgiveness. And whenever anyone shows you what is true about this life and world, that it is not a walk in the park, but that it is sad and hard and full of uncertainty, will then hold fast to what is certain. Jesus suffered and died for you, and then he rose. Because of those blessed events, this place and this life is not our final destination. We are not children of this world. We are God's children. Here, we are strangers, but in heaven, that is where we'll finally be home. In the meantime, though, as you find yourself facing all sorts of trials of body and soul, do not wait until you have been driven to absolute despair to receive God's healing. It is true that Jesus is able to fill you up if you come to him starving for righteousness. But he has not told you there is any need for you to let yourself get to this point. Instead, make your receiving God's gift in the means of grace a regular part of your life. Come, receive Jesus where he has said he will be found. And through these, Jesus will bear you through even the most seemingly desperate and difficult times in your life. 
and he will not dismiss you until he has filled you up and given you his enduring peace. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.